the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. So I welcome you to our Friday of the fifth week of Lent, and we're just two days away from the celebration starting with Palm Sunday of Holy Week. So this is a good time on this Friday afternoon as we gather at the Mass to remember that we all climb to Calvary. This is our time to take stock of our journey to Calvary. And the Calvary always leads to the empty tomb, that we have reasons to rejoice. So let us look into our hearts. Do we take into our heart the knowledge that our sins are truly forgiven when we hand them over to the Lord? Do we recognize that we can let go of resentment and anger towards others? And we can have this passion journey to remind us that we're not alone. Christ entered into this journey freely. So let us ask forgiveness of our sins and strengthening of our faith. Lord Jesus, you bring us to the mercy of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you fortify us in word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in God's holy mercy to judge the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. So just before we have our opening prayer, uh, just to remind you, we have a saint today. Um, we're not going to celebrate his feast day because we're still on our Latin journey. His name is Blessed Salvador Huerta. He is one of the 90,000 Cristeros that were um, martyred, men, women, and children. He is the patron saint of faith and fidelity in living the gospel. He is one of the patrons of Guadalajara, and he has family, actually, in this archdiocese of Los Angeles. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion my persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my, In my distress, distress, I called, I called upon, upon the Lord, Lord and, and he heard, heard my, my voice. voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the nether world enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In, In my distress, distress I called upon the Lord, and he heard, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. 
In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ King, King of endless glory. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading, my brothers and my sisters, from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We're not stoning you for a good work but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe in me, believe in the works that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. And they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back, he went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. So this is a time that many people are beginning to believe again in Jesus, in the power of God and his mercy. And it happens because people in times of distress and kinds of great upheaval have nowhere else to turn. We learn that we are truly not the self-sufficient, self-contained people we claim to be. And so we can take example of those who have heard the word of God and whose lives have been transformed. So I had the privilege in my early um, years as a priest to make a pilgrimage to um, Israel for nine days, and I encountered a Polish-Ukrainian Franciscan and the way we encounter him is I had 10 Polish sisters from the Immaculate Conception Shrine from the, um, Washington with us. And they heard singing and they all started jumping up and down in joy. We're outside the tomb of Jesus and they went in. They were not supposed to, but they did. Because you're not going to stop Polish sisters from doing what they wish to do. <laughs> and they went into that little chamber where he was offering Mass and they surrounded him and they entered into the Mass with him. So afterwards, they brought him out to the rest of us on pilgrimage, and they introduced him. And I had the privilege to spend just a little bit of time because they were not going to share this priest with anyone who wasn't Polish. And he shared a little bit of his story. He was a man who had went through the horrors of the Second World War, particularly the Holocaust. He had lost every member of his family except for two cousins in Treblinka. Now, he himself was Jewish. But yet, there is a journey he will become Roman Catholic. And it happened on a train journey where he was secretly leaving the area and trying to escape that he encountered a priest in disguise, a Franciscan. And the priest reminded him that God is in the presence with his love, even in the loss of his family. And that this man, Father Andreas, as he um, was named in religious life, began to realize the hatred he had, the anger, was not leaving, that he had to find an alternative. And it became for him trying to forgive those who did these horrible outrages and try to understand that there is a journey for him. So he tried to go back to the prayers of being a young Jewish boy, and they helped him. And then he began to realize, there's something I need to connect with. 
And for him, after he escaped and was able to come to the United States, and then later on, he was sent to Israel because he will enter the Franciscans of the Holy Land. He entered the Roman Catholic Church. And it was there he began to have peace. But then a ministry developed. He asked that he could spend the rest of his life in ministry at the site where Jesus was buried and rose from the dead. And that was given to him. So he died many years ago, but Father Andreas is an example to me of someone who heard the cry of the Lord in his challenge, in his um, pain and suffering, and he learned to trust. And in our journey with the pandemic that we're dealing with, we may find ourselves isolated at times. We may have voices crying out, if you're truly the God man, help me to really understand. Notice in the Gospel of John, Jesus comes back to the place where he was baptized. The point in his, began his ministry where John was ending his ministry. And people began to believe. Will we take away the anger, the rigidity of standing on our own two feet alone, thinking that we can do it by ourselves? We can open our hearts. And it's in the heart that God brings healing. So I pray that all of us in this time can seek out that healing. If we have the time on our hands that we have right now, don't waste it. If we're on the internet, we're on Facebook, or we're making use of the social media, we can be bridges. We can help bring people to seek out positive ways to deal with the challenges. Do we take time for scripture? Do we take time for prayer that will lead us to do acts of love and charity? We can't go out and do the things we did in the same way, but every one of us can be an encourager and apostle of mercy. So Father Andreas spent the rest of his ministry in the tomb, but he was certainly liberated and was resurrected. And I was so privileged as a newly ordained priest in my first assignment to be on this pilgrimage because I encountered people whose faith journeys opened my heart. And it's a very difficult journey for me as a 55-year-old priest at times because I can be very stubborn and I can have, want to have things my way. But stories of others who've gone before or present to us now can help us to let go of the need to be in control and let Christ who is the God man shine and prepare us for our Easter journey by letting this holy week that is coming be rooted in our hearts. It's people of faith who each of us has a longing to have our prayers united with others. Let us offer up particularly as we begin the start for Holy Week, the coming Sunday, to ask the Lord to help us to take up our cross at this time. We pray for all those who are in the midst of this pandemic, who are first responders, nurses, doctors, people in grocery stores, people who are out there helping others in need. They may stay safe and that all of us heed call to stay home as much as possible so that we do not become a burden to our health system. We pray to the Lord. No, no. Lord hear our we pray for those who are dying. We particularly pray for those whose acts of love and selflessness is helping people on their journey even though they're suffering. We pray for all of our parishioners here at St. Cornelius. And if you're online streaming with us now, offer your intentions in your heart with what we're praying for today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the gift of patience, love, and mercy, that we do not become angry, reactionary, and that we take this time to really reach out to bring healing where there is doubt and confusion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And now I open up for any petitions in your hearts that you wish to offer, both in silence or out loud. For the repose of the soul of Elaine Pantano, a longtime parishioner, her brother-in-law passed away this week. If we could pray for him. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for the Franciscans of the Holy Land who take care of the shrines who are trying to get people to go online to see Palm Sunday processions, to be involved in Holy Week activities that cannot be present at this moment in actuality, that people can take this as a sign of in their homes 
living out the mysteries and the rituals and the blessings we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Now we'd like to offer the prayer offered by our Archbishop in union with our Holy Father and the bishops throughout the world to help us on this journey. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son as you did at the wedding in Canaan. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and the world, and for all our families and loved ones, protection of your holy angels that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother, help of the sick and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us to know the love of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, we come for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God. God. Blessed be Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father, the Almighty. Amen. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve you fittingly at your altars, and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered well in each passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, his auxiliary bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your peace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Saint Joseph, her most chaste balance, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, Saint Cornelius, our patron, blessed Huerta and all the martyrs of the Cristero Revolution, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take Amen. away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Grant us, us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the cross, so that dead to sin we might live for righteousness, 
By his wounds we have been healed. Just a reminder, we will have Stations of the Cross being televised, and hopefully all of you will continue your journey towards Holy Week. Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far from us all that would do us harm through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Go and serve the gospel. Thanks. Thanks. God bless you all, and may you continue to provide yourself and your family with the incentive to enter into Holy Week. Have a good evening.